this episode, we're going to unravel the mysteries of the repeat lane. Let's start with an overview of the tracks in our live set. This loops track is an audio loop which is providing a steady pulse. The bass track is driven by a mono sequencer. The track is record enabled and the MIDI input menu is set to transpose. Finally, we have a guitar track. The pulse is set to eighth notes and the pitch lane isn't doing anything special. There are only two pitches. We're getting a bit more pitch variation due to the octave lane switching things up in a loop of five pulses. This track is also record enabled and Mono Sequencer's MIDI input menu is set to transpose. With Mono Sequencer set up this way, it functions almost like a real-time generative process that I can play from my MIDI keyboard. We can make the result a bit more varied by introducing a random element. I'm going to change the step behavior from up to random on the pitch lane, and then I'll do the same thing on the octave lane. Okay, so now let's move to the repeat lane. As I increase the repeat values, the number of repeating values within that pulse also increases. The effect of this is relative to the overall pulse value. Larger pulse values allow you to explore more extreme subdivisions of the pulse. If you're not interested in 13 subdivisions within a pulse, you can quantize your selection to even or triplet multiples. If the repeats at the same velocity sound unmusical to you, try one of the repeat velocity scaling presets which scale up to and or down from the maximum velocity. Let's scale the repeat values back down and move the pulse back to an eighth note. I'm also going to change the step behavior to random so I get a random repeat value. The number of times a particular value exists determines how likely it will be that it is chosen, or in other words, you have control over the weighting of certain effects. Now I can go ahead and improvise and each performance will be subtly or wildly different, depending on how the sequencers are set up. 